Welcome there, boys. What's going on? Sog Specialty Knives. Sog Specialty Knives, okay? Yeah, and this one's not that soggy, really. It, it feels pretty firm. Oh, baby. Made in J Japan. Seiki Japan. VG10 blade. It's a big knife. Why do I have it? Of course I've got it because it's a big knife. Look at this. Come on, hold on. Back up, back up, back up. What? Get the drone about 200 foot up in there, and then we'll see the whole dying thing. Um, this one is a hoss, is it? Not. It is not, yes. Okay, hold on. I got this from the Smoky, the mountains, and I, sometime I got to go up there and go to that, but it takes about three days to get out of the state of Florida, much less to get up to Tennessee or wherever the hell, so. And, but I got friends in Tennessee, so I, maybe I should get up there. Uh, Spec Elite 2, Black Zytel, oh, the most exotic materials. Modified drop point, looks like a little bit of a recurve in it. Oh. Did you see the price? $99. And I I got I bought it. One of the guys, you know, that directs messaged me back and forth on my Instagram said, check this out, because I know you like big knives, and I cannot lie. And comes in a box like yay, which ain't much a whole lot of deal. And that's it. Jeez. Oh wow, don't it luxuriate me in overload here. The SE-18, um, but it is, it's a big dog. It's almost 11 inches, which is, that's big enough for a gent carry at least. And let me see, what do we got? Five inch blade, they're saying. Yeah, 10 and three quarter overall. So yeah, that, that lines up with the, with the numbers they use. They say it's a five inch blade. Okay, maybe not completely, you know, right there, but... What is that? 12 and a half centimeter length blade and woo, 27 at least centimeters uh, overall length. And where's how fat is the fat handle? That big fat Zytel, 0.65 of an inch, 16.6 millimeters. What do we got for blade stock? We got four millimeter blade stock at 0.15. So Four millimeter blade stock. You can see you got a little bit of a recurve on there. But, I mean, you look at that and you go, I like it, right? I mean, do you not like it? I like the overall design. And I was thinking, oh, Sog, you know, it's a hit and a miss. The XR, and I don't have the Seal XR folding knife, okay? I did, and then I didn't. And then I did again, and then I didn't, and now I got to go back and get it because it's ridiculous. It's the best thing SOG's ever done, including the Spec Elite 2. The Spec Elite 2, though, is not as expensive as the Seal XR. It's not, it's way bigger, but it's not as expensive as the Seal XR. The Seal XR's got nicer uh, blade steel. I, I like the build on it better and all that kind of stuff. This one, um, if you want to get right down to the nitpicky on this, um, and, and, and hold on, they're not calling this, this is not an XR lock. What are they saying that this is? Arc lock. Okay, so they're back, and, and I got more pages here. Arc lock, and so, yeah, I remember the arc lock, and then I had the fat cat, and now I don't have the fat cat anymore, but the fat cat was an arc lock, and then... Uh, I had some play in that, too, um, in the arc lock for the Fat Cat. This one, no, nah, I mean, I'm okay. I'm okay. There's no play in there. Um, and there, it was a little bit of play when I had it like this, but uh, I sent it to SOG. They had it for a month and a half, finally got it back, supposedly fixed. Still, a little bit of play in there. So the arc lock. Uh, no, XR, yes, and uh, but this one seems solid, so let's play with the damn thing. What the hell are you buying for? Okay. Okay. Um, it's 
reasonable. It's reasonable, I'd say, you know, uh, out of the box as far as sharpness goes. So, yeah, I, I mean, you know, recurve, ooh, yeah, I can do it, but I don't like doing it because I got to get my round diamond impregnated rod. I mean, you could use a round ceramic rod and all that kind of stuff to do that, but uh, sharpen that recurve. Uh, pocket clip. Uh, yeah, not my choice. I mean, I would have thought about some options on the pocket clip myself. I mean, not so much the this, you know, because this is okay and it's springy enough and the way this goes up and then levels out will get over the lip of your pocket and that's not a problem. And definitely gives you room to grab it, pull it out of your pocket. And the fact that it's 5.75 inches long means you may not want it full deep carry because it hit the bottom of your pocket maybe. But, uh, okay. Um, okay. I mean, it's probably adequate and it's nothing to brag about. But then there's other things about this knife that I wouldn't brag about necessarily either. And I, I think it could have been better. But then again, it's $99 and it's made in Japan. So maybe that's where we come in with our compromises. 6.74 ounces. So it's not lightweight, but you can kind of tell. I mean, it's fairly fat handle and it's pretty thick uh, blade stock and it's long. Um, yeah, 191 grams. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's centered. Okay. The action is pretty nice. I mean, see what I'm saying? It's okay. Uh, you can roll it open with your thumb. And you got this jimped uh, area here. You can get, there's jimping here. Uh, there's jimping here. Uh, the, the thing is, is this is I tell, okay. And with the liners and stuff like that, um, don't know exactly how to, uh, express this, but, um, JP was down here from up near Orlando and he came by and I said, check this out. And he was like, Hey, I like it. It's, it's way cool. You know, blades interesting and all that. But I mean, we were ripping, uh, <laughs> bins out of my cabinets of knives and going through them because a lot of them he hadn't put his hands on. But, and I said, check this out. I mean, I like it. I like the design, this and this and this, but this is edgy. This is Zytel, you know, and of course, um, uh, probably, you know, injection molded type thing, not a machined kind of, uh, synthetic. And so it, they, if they would have hit these corners, you know, all the way around. I mean, this is supposed to be jimped, etc. But you, um, it could have been done better. And and here too, it just feels like not really that well finished here and here and here and here. And I would think something made in Japan, I'd expect a little bit nicer fit and finish than China, but. You know, then you can go ahead and argue that, right? Because China's making world-class knives and they've really taken over as the, you know, really high-end production champ regardless. So, okay. Um, but this, yeah, it, it could use a little bit more attention to this kind of stuff. So that's what it is. It's, it's the handle. Now, you're getting plenty of grip. That's good there. So as we sit here and hyper focus on this, and then you got these liners in here as well. And that's okay. They give support to everything, including the pivot and the R clock, etc. Um, ergos are are good, except I'm still finding, you know. Uh, myself kind of catching on the, this edginess here when I grab it. And then if I want to back up and kind of find a little 
space, then this is kind of edgy too. And that, you know, really bite, bite right here because it's not rounded, you know? I mean, that kind of thing. So is it, is it ultra comfortable? No. Is it, you know, is it passable? Yeah. If you had gloves, would it be better? Yeah, absolutely would be. So, I mean, you know, the plunge is symmetrical. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's good. It's good. Um, yeah, I, 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 you know, I keep going back to the design. Yes, I like the design. So, uh, reverse grip. That's good. That's pretty good. Reverse grip is good. You've got a lanyard hole here that passes through there and it looks like it's tubed with whatever that is for a backspacer. I don't know about the level of quality of the hardware. It kind of looks suspect to me, but you kind of got to keep running back to, you know, the price and the fact that it's made in Japan and all that kind of thing. Um, it looks like a hollow grind to me, doesn't that to you? I guess I'll put my correction there, but I look, you know, I keep, you know, my eyes just blur sometimes, but that looks like a hollow grind to me. So it ought to be pretty effective at cutting and a VG10 is a good stainless, you know, so it should be pretty corrosion resistant and I, I like it as a user steel. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I mean, good ease of opening here. You know, so even though it's a huge knife and you kind of got to crawl up the tree here to get up to this part. I mean, you're all the way up here to to be able to stretch out and and function with this. But I mean, it's a big knife. It's a big knife. It seems solid, though. So we're good there. So it looks like we've got a number 10 here on the pivot. And I don't know how far I want to strip down this knife, but uh, you might want to take a little gander at the arc lock, that kind of thing. And oh, now we're going to drop right back to a six. How lovely that is. And we've got them all over the place down here. Let's just hope we don't have any um, hardware issues. And let we getting that out, getting that out. Are those the same size? Yeah. Okay. So we got number six is all over here, smattered, holding things together. And let's see now if we have put a different. No, it looks the same. That's good. If you can put the same size screw all the way through there as your number six is, then at least you don't have quite the mess and let me see well i'm glad i got my little olight tool here because i'm gonna use the bits that they put in here there's the other for number six number eight they go in here and uh but it has a screwdriver Phillips combo, and so that's going to have to come out. There's super long, and they and they had to make them Phillips. Why did they have to make them Phillips? And here's a number ten Torx. So strange. Okay, you done playing? Okay, wow. Okay, hold on. I was going to take my screwdriver and unscrew that that actuator, but I don't I don't need to do it for that. So there's the inside of what would be the lock side of this. And then we've got the little omega spring, which is just the way she goes. Um Okay. 
and uh, there's the Omega spring for that side. And I guess, really, uh, yeah, you're going to have to remove this. Maybe that's the way they engineered this as opposed to the way they did the access lock. You remember that? Um, so that this could actually come off of here. Okay, so now we've got this side off. Whew. That was all kinds of fun. We got all the equipment over here, boys. Okay, so we got pivot. We got... Omega spring, we've got a little actuator, and we've got this. And yeah, so we don't have bearings, we just have a washer. And we go that on the other side. And here's the arc lock. So here's how it goes. You know, how it operates there. And of course, this is from the other side showing how it opens there's the stop there's how it locks up and and there's the stop here i reckon i reckon it's using this as the stop right there okay hmm so, yeah, I mean, I guess there's uh, not a lot of mystery to it. It looks like, I don't know if it looks like a little bit more complicated than the axis lock. And I think the axis lock just made it so much easier because it just put a bar down there. And then you could slide the bar out. Um, and, uh, yeah, probably a little a little easier to do, a little more simple, and maybe less prone to uh, play and certain kinds of failure. So I reckon I can go ahead and put this little whirly gig back on here and uh, stick the uh, Omega spring back through like that and then uh, oh, oh, there you go kick this right back in that hole there it goes just like that all the lovelies and now oh yeah hold on i'm looking up and down i'm sorry i'm pulling it back and forth it's just a big knife um let me line this up see what we got but we've got to lock these two areas down with these screws on here and i guess they're all the same size um there we go kick that you know actually it wouldn't harm anybody's feelings if we just did that let's put our pivot back in number 10 number 10 and of course the pocket clip same deal right yeah uh, we're gonna have to watch this because we got that washer right and so that washer could be a real pain in the posterior if you lock that down too hard then that you're gonna lose your action on this on this lock mechanism so you're gonna have to make sure you're okay there okay now we can start just jacking screws in here um and we got number sixes all over the damn place Just make sure we get them straight in. Actually, the hardware feels okay. I was a little suspect that it was really going to be 
up to the task, but so far so good. It unscrews and screws back in, doesn't twirl the other side, doesn't do weird things, doesn't feel like it's uh, indecisive or uh, it it it's hitting it's hitting the mark. Uh, 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 come on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me see how that affects that pivot, too, if there's any impact on the pivot from how you drive these screws in as well. Okay, come on. Okay, we got you. Um, and then we got the two little dogs here that go into the pocket clip that are just like, wow, amazing. They are long, 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 long. Yeah, and this little bar, um, by the way, just in case you're, it's an FYI for you, but you got screwdriver and Phillips, number six, number eight. They sit down together. This little thing swings over. Got place for a lanyard hole here for like uh, hex, whatever. Uh, this is actually a whistle. And... Uh, pry bar of course and bottle opener and uh yeah whistle works okay yes so the o pry pro and of course there was another one from olight as well which is the o pry not oprah winfrey o pry and then o pry pro so I mean, it's just nice to have them in your pocket because then you can do things with them too, except there ain't no number 10, you know, no number 10 torques if you uh, have a number 10 here. That's uh, okay. Then you, it's time to think about that again. Okay, now let's see where we are in the action because I just locked it down so freaking hard that I need to open it up a bit. Let's see where we need to go with it. And I, and I don't know, but what I'm going to have to adjust these. Mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, number six is, I think I need to back these off a bit. Because they're, they're hossing down on here. Okay, now. Now, but I don't want it loose. No, it's not loose. There. No. It's centered. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, see. Have you seen knives where you have, like, stop pin? And you have, and you have to adjust that? I don't like that situation. I've seen them where they have... Uh, Torx entry on both sides, and you ha and you can get that crank down so hard that you hurt the action on the pivot. And so, not only do you have to adjust the pivot, but you got to adjust the stop. Now, this thing's got two pins here, so uh, okay. But I guess you just back them off a little by little until you hit that happy zone. And we're centered, and it doesn't seem like it's sloppy or anything. So I guess we're as good as we're going to get. Well, I hope I didn't bore you to tears, but the SOG, uh, if you are interested in this Spec Elite 2, um, and I didn't look to see what other sellers had it. I mean, I saw Smoky Mountain and I did check a couple others and they didn't have it in stock. So, 
Uh, and I don't know if this is an exclusive for Smokey or not. I, I think probably not. But yeah, uh, $99. For what it is, it's big. It's fun. It's an arc lock. It seems to be relatively solid. And it's made in Japan. So, okay. I mean, I'll give you 99 bucks for it. I, I, I think it's okay. Right or left hand deep carry on the... Well, not deep, deep carry, but you know, see how the pocket clip lays. Um, and probably as deep as you want to carry it uh, on the uh, pocket clip. So, and of course, it's left and right hand friendly as far as the arc lock, the ambidextrous thumb studs go, etc. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's reasonable all the way around. It just depends on your sense of taste, but I do like the design. And the size is a plus for me. Take care, my friends. Love them knives. That's who we are. So you guys, stay sharp.